The next speaker is the Prime Minister of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, His Excellency Mr. Milan Panic, who has expressed the wish to make a statement on the item under consideration. I give the floor Mr. Milan Panic. Mr. President, Mr. Secretary General, distinguished delegates, I sincerely appreciate this opportunity to address you today on behalf of the people of Yugoslavia. I wish particularly to congratulate you, my President, Mr. President, on your election to this high and noble position, which you will greatly help, I'm sure, the smooth and efficient running of this General Assembly. The, president. the issue before this assembly now is more peace or more war. Yesterday you heard an argument from the president of one of my neighboring countries for more war. Today I will present you with an argument and a program for more peace. You have also heard arguments here for not accepting the participation of Yugoslavia in the noble work of United Nations. At the United Nations Conference of Refugees at Geneva in late July, I said I accepted not being accepted and asked the delegates to stop the politics and start talking about refugee problems. Some of you may know that I have some understanding of how refugee feels, because I myself was a political refugee from Tito's Yugoslavia. Living in a refugee camp in Germany, I have some of the same feelings today. Too many are talking politics when they are, should be talking peace. From the first day that my new government of Yugoslavia took office, two months ago, we have cooperated with the United Nations in every way we could. We'll continue to do so regardless of the action you take here today. My only goal is to restore the peace and stability to the Balkans. We are now at a turning point when this great organization devoted to peace must decide whether peace is a fur furthered by sending arms in or taking arms out. The Balkans are polluted already with too many arms. It is, in a, it is in a sense, an environmental problem or tragical proportions. Please hear my message. Please hear my message. Do not authorize the means for a broadening of the conflict. We need more United Nations monitoring, monitors and peacing, peacekeeping forces in the Balkans, not more arms for the parties to the conflict. Let us come up with a creative and effective way to control and remove the arms that are there already. My government will cooperate fully with United Nations in any way you want in order to bring the weapons under control and end the fighting and killings. We have offered repeatedly to accept United Nations monitors at our airfields. I have to apologize. We have offered repeatedly to, ex and to accept United Nations monitors and at our airfields and on our borders. In London, on August 26, 
I requested several thousand peacekeeping forces to be sent to patrol our borders and offered to help the United Nations with logistical support to cover some of the expenses. I renew that request now. Please come to Yugoslavia and assure yourself that no support is flowing from Yugoslavia to combatants or Bosnia in Bosnia or Croatia. My government has given orders to stop any support for combatants in Bosnia and Croatia, but as in many other parts of the world, we still have some militant nationalists who defy our orders. We need your help. We welcome your help. Again, I say, please come as peacemakers, not, not as suppliers of weapons to those who want to fight. Let us also look at the factual situation with regard to foreign troops in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I assure you here that all Yugoslav troops have been withdrawn from Bosnia. The United Nations Command confirmed this to me. A New York Times, Times article on September 19, which was based largely on US and British intelligence sources, said that Yugoslav army had been withdrawn from Bosnia on May 19, and that nearly all of the irregulars from Bosnia had been withdrawn. The same article said that 30,000 regulars and 10,000 irregulars Croatian troops are fighting in Bosnia and Herzegovina. I state that strictly for a matter of fact and not to irritate the situation with Croatia. Yet Croatia sits in your midst, not subject to any criticism or sanction. I admit that I am new to international affairs, but this looks like a double standard to me. I call upon the United Nations to demand that all foreign troops and volunteers irregular be withdrawn from Bosnia and Herzegovina immediately under threat of the imposition of sanctions and thus would be in, in event handed, even handed and part of the peace process. This would be even handed and part of the peace process. Mr. President, I would like to address the question of continuity and recognition of new countries that were once republics of old Yugoslavia. The position of my government on recognition has been stated clearly on several occasions in recent weeks. We recognize borders between republics which were established by Tito's communist regime as now being international borders. I declare once again here that Yugoslavia has no territorial claims against any of her neighbors. I declare once again that Yugoslavia has no territorial claims against any of her neighbors. We have negotiated most of the issue in our relationship with Croatia, we believe, and hope that we'll soon have an agreement with Croatia on a mutual recognition. We have declared that we recognize the state of Bosnia and Herzegovina with its existing borders and are prepared to recognize its government when all three ethnic communities in Bosnia reach an agreement on organization of their state of government. The problems of the governance of Bosnia must be resolved by the Bosnians, all of the Bosnians. The problem is not in Belgrade, as claimed yesterday by the president of Bosnia. The problem lies in Sarajevo. The government of Bosnia presented here is, in this body has got to convince all of the people of Bosnia that it is truly, that truly represents their interest. That is the road to peace in Bosnia. They must truly represent the interests of Serbs and Croats and Muslims. But I do not wish to speak for Bosnia or for old Yugoslavia. I speak only for the new Yugoslavia whose government I represent. The Constitution of Yugoslavia vests the conduct of foreign relations in the Yugoslav government. 
The two constituents, Republic Serbia and Montenegro, have no legal role in foreign affairs of Yugoslavia. World leaders and representatives of international organizations meet with me and ask my help to stop the fighting in Bosnia and also to end the fear of Serbian territorial expansions. But they give me no help or support in my internal struggle in Yugoslavia. With, with those militant nationalists who oppose my policies of peace, they even bolster their position of my principal internal opponents by meeting with them on their visits to Yugoslavia. Please stop this. Hold me and my government responsible and accountable for the policies and actions of Yugoslavia. But give us the help and international recognition we need in pursuing our program of peace. Mr. President, I herewith formally request membership in the United Nations on behalf of the new Yugoslavia, whose government I represent. I'm sure my country and my government satisfy the condition for membership, at least as well as the countries and governments many of you here today represent. Yugoslavia was a founding member of the United Nations and has always lived up to its principles. My government honors those principles and struggles to uphold them under very difficult circumstances. I seek your support and recognition. Do not undermine a man of peace and peace-loving Yugoslavs. Do not undermine men of peace and peace-loving Yugoslavs. Mr. President, one of the major concerns of the world with regard to Yugoslavia is ethnic cleansing and the hundreds of thousands of refugees created, created by this vile practice. Ethnic cleansing is horrible, unacceptable, and unforgivable practice. I have moved actively against it in Yugoslavia. I recently fired Vice Minister of Internal Affairs who failed to post support my government's program of opposition to ethnic cleansing. I had the mayor of three others arrested, and three others arrested, and put in jail in a town where ethnic cleansing has been practiced against Croatians. Wherever it occurs, in any of the republics of the old Yugoslavia, ethnic cleansing must be stopped and reversed. But in our reaction to the horrors of the ethnic cleansing. Let us guard against practice to it by slipping into intolerance. We must not permit the war in Bosnia to become a religious war, a war of Muslim against Christians, supported from outside by Muslims and Christians. Surely, the United Nations has to rise above this. The Organization of United Nations has found, found it in opposition to religious and racial intolerance that produced the Second World War. This organization must stand for peace and tolerance everywhere. There is no place in modern world, world for religious blocks. Please forgive a personal note on tolerance. I'm Serbian Orthodox. My wife is Catholic. My daughter is married to a Muslim. I have two Muslim grandchildren. I have Croatian among my ancestry. Personally and philosophically, I am opposed to ethnic and religious intolerance. Mr. President, I believe that in the post-communist era, the major powers have a special responsibility to ensure that the stable political and economic transformation of the emerging democracies. They must take particular care to promote ethnic and religious tolerance and to guard against being influenced in the pursuit of their responsibility when pressure extended by special interest blocks or nations. Either we are all equal or some are more equal 
than others. Either we are equal, all equal, or some are more equal than others. I, of course, prefer the former. Let me emphasize that without true tolerance, you cannot have true peace. Without true tolerance, you cannot have true peace. Mr. President, it is difficult to preach tolerance to those who are suffering under economic sanctions that have not been applied in an even-handed way to all of the parties to the conflict. But my government does, does preach tolerance because it is right to do so and because tolerance leads to peace. Once again, let me emphasize that my message today is a message of peace. My message is a message of peace. My government is pursuing program of peace. We need the understanding of, and help of this body. Your acceptance of the transformation we are seeking to implement and your recognition will further the causes of peace. I fear that your rejection would impair it. I, I wish to turn your attention, Mr. President and distinguished delegates, to resolution of the Yugoslav Federal Assembly approved today, which clearly underlines a very grave concern over the resolution on the membership of Yugoslavia in the United Nations. The re resolution is tabled here, and I'm asking you for a due attention. In the name of peace, in the name of peace, I thank you for listening to what I have to say. Thank you very much. I thank the representative of the United Kingdom, of uh, Mr. Panic, for his statement here. I now give the floor to the representative of uh, Croatia.